Welcome. Inhalers are unique to lung diseases, and correct inhaler technique is crucial for optimal medication delivery. Device selection is just as important as deciding which medication to prescribe. There are over 50 brand name inhalers and a variety of different devices, creating confusion and increasing the chances for error. Today, we will focus on key factors in choosing an inhaled medication delivery device for patients. The following common patient scenarios demonstrate the importance of incorporating patient characteristics and preferences when choosing an inhaled medication delivery device. Well, hi, Ms. Turner. Hello. I understand you're having some trouble with wheezing and cough. I have been, especially since I moved to Minnesota and especially in the wintertime. I used to use an inhaler when I was young, and I was wondering if something like that would help me again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ms. Turner, I think that's very reasonable. Um, this is an HFA inhaler. Does this look familiar to you? It does look familiar, and I remember that I had to push down on it to get the medication. Yes, that's absolutely right. You push down here on the top and the medication comes out. But I don't think I can do that with my arthritic Ooh, hands. Yeah. You've got some pretty severe arthritis. You know, an HFA inhaler might not be the best for you. We need to find an inhaler that will work for you. Um, why don't we start you off on a dry powder inhaler? That'll be fine. Pressurized meter dose inhalers, or MDIs, deliver medication at high velocity via a pressurized system. This fast velocity often creates difficulty in coordination between actuation and inhalation, which should be taken into consideration when prescribing. Patients may have trouble actuating the inhaler, as was the case with our patient, or may have difficulty coordinating their breath with device actuation. The routine use of a spacer helps improve both coordination and medication delivery to the lungs. The following is a demonstration of proper PMDI technique. To use a meter dose inhaler, you need to use it with a spacer or extender tube. You need to stand erect, take a breath in, and blow it all out to empty out your airways. Then you put the spacer between your lips, and then you're going to depress the canister. You take a breath in slowly for a count of five. Then you hold your breath for a count of ten and let your air out, such as this. Here are some commonly prescribed medications available as pressurized meter dose inhalers. Dry powder inhalers are breath actuated devices that can be used in patients who have difficulty with coordination between actuation and inhalation. A variety of dry powder inhaler devices exist. We will demonstrate how to use a dry powder inhaler using the Ellipta device. We will be using an ellipta to demonstrate a dry powder inhaler. To do this, you need to open it up to hear the click to activate it. Then you need to take a breath in and blow it all out. Then you need to seal your lips around the mouthpiece, making sure you're not covering these vents with your fingers. And then you need to suck in hard and then hold your breath for a count of 10 and then slowly exhale such as this. Here are some commonly prescribed medications available as dry powder inhalers. Note the variety of device types, each with a different mechanism and technique. Well, welcome back, Mr. Lyle. Thank you. Yeah. How's your new inhaler working for the COPD? Thank you, doctor. I wish I could tell you that it was helping my breathing, but actually I think it's, my breathing is worse. I'm sorry to hear that. Um, so you have, a, you have a dry powder inhaler here. Uh, let me check your pulmonary function test here. Okay, okay. Uh, FEV1 of 26% predicted. I'll bet I know what's causing the problem. Um, let's test your breathing to see if you're able to breathe in fast enough. Take this here and I want you to take a big fast inhalation, as hard as you can. Thanks. 
Okay. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought. Your COPD makes it difficult for you to breathe in fast enough to get any of the medication out of this dry powder inhaler. You need to generate flows of about 30 liters per minute, and you were only able to generate about 20 liters per minute. All dry powder inhalers are the same, so I don't think this is the inhaler for you. Why don't we try a Respimat inhaler? Dry powder inhalers require inspiratory flows greater than 30 to 60 liters per minute. If flows are lower than that, the medication will not reliably reach the distal airways. As in the patient scenario, flows can be assessed with an in-check device. Soft mist inhalers like the Respimat release medication in a soft mist, which lasts in the air about six times longer than that of an MDI, reducing problems with coordination between actuation and inhalation. The slow release of the mist decreases deposition in the oropharynx and allows better medication delivery to the lungs. The patient should have the necessary inspiratory duration to use this type of inhaler. We will now demonstrate how to use a Respimat inhaler. To use the Respimat device such as this one, you need to stand erect. To activate the device, you're going to twist it until you hear it click. You're going to remove the mouthpiece. You're going to take a breath in and exhale, and then you're going to seal your lips around the mouthpiece, and you're going to depress this gray button. You're going to inhale slowly for a count of five, then hold your breath for a count of 10, and slowly exhale, such as this. Here are some commonly prescribed medications available with the Respimat device. Hi, Mr. Jameson. Good to see you again. Mrs. Jameson, thanks for being with us today. You're welcome. Well, how have things gone since the last time we met? Oh, about the same. It just seems like there's one thing after another now with this new COPD diagnosis. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. I, it can be a very difficult thing caring for an ill family member. Well, we get by. Mm -hmm. well, I'm glad to hear that. How has he been doing with the new inhaler that we gave you last time? Well, it's hard to say. I don't really notice any difference, but I don't know if we're doing it right. Okay. Do you happen to have it with you? I do. Okay. Why don't you show me how, how he uses it and see if there's a problem there. Okay, honey, we're going to show the doctor how you use the inhaler. All right. Oh, oh, okay, sweetheart. Okay. Ready? Okay. Okay. Yeah, I think we need to get him some help. He seems to have difficulty using the inhaler. You know, an alternative could be an aero chamber. It's like a big spacer that will allow the medication to get down to the small airways where he needs them. And if that doesn't help, if that doesn't work, then we can always give him in a nebulizer. Okay. An anti-static valved volumetric spacer is helpful for patients who have difficulty coordinating actuation and inhalation with an MDI. These are used with pressurized meter dose inhalers as demonstrated here. To use your HFA device with an aero chamber such as this, you're going to attach your HFA to the end of your aero chamber, the rubber opening, take off the mouthpiece, you're going to inhale and exhale to empty out those lungs, seal your lips around the mouthpiece, depress the canister, breathe in slowly for a count of five, then you're going to hold your breath for a count of 10 and slowly exhale such as this. Now, if you inhale too forcefully, you'll get this sound. A nebulizer is a good option for aerosol medication delivery in patients where coordination is impossible or reliable, such as in young children or those with cognitive impairment. A nebulizer is a good option when cost becomes an issue with inhalers as well. Nebulizers can allow for higher doses of medication administration, but are usually associated with longer treatment times. The following is a demonstration of a basic nebulizer setup. 
To use a nebulizer, you need a nebulizer, you need a medication setup, and you need your medication. You're going to instill your medication into the cup. You're going to attach the hose to your medication cup. You're going to turn on your machine or compressor. You have two modes, either continuous, such as this, or you have breath actuated. You're going to seal your lips around the mouthpiece. Then you're going to take some nice, easy breaths like this here. Here are some commonly prescribed medications available for use in a nebulizer. Thank you for your attention. As you have seen, patient characteristics, inspiratory flow, comorbidities, and preferences are important considerations when choosing a medication delivery device. It is important for physicians to become familiar with these devices, including their roles and limitations to optimally care for their patients. Thank you.